Times, Gators, Florida State, USF, and much more. Uh, Matt, thanks for your time with David Smoke and Craig Smoke as well on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. So you were working on some project. Was it about facilities or football stadium on campus? What was that about? Yeah, so thanks for having me. So USF here in Tampa is, push, I would say, pushing for an on-campus football stadium. So right now they play their games about 20, 25 minutes away at Raymond James Stadium where the Bucks play. And this is an issue that's been going on for, for years. They've been talking about, do we need an on-campus stadium? How much would it cost? Where would we build it? All that sort of thing. And in September, right around the time, uh, coincidentally, of course, that UCF was announcing that they were going to the Big 12, that whole thing was coming. USF here in Tampa uh, made a move, an announcement that the Board of Trustees said, we're going to build an on-campus stadium. And I think that took a lot of people by surprise. And now they're trying to kind of figure out where would it go, how much would it cost, and all the details. And what I wanted to do was to look, take a look back and see, okay, what are some of the schools that have made the move recently from it playing off campus somewhere to an on-campus stadium? And what did that do for them? So I looked at the seven most recent schools that did that, to, including Baylor, by the way, to try and figure out what that might mean for the Bulls here in Tampa. And uh, what did you find has been sort of the reaction to the idea? Like, is this something where, you know, sometimes there's projects and it's, it's, a, it's a project that maybe somebody has that they, that they want personally or something. Is this actually something, though, that the fans are kind of clamoring for? It depends on, the, on who you're talking to. I, I think most, peop, most USF fans realize that the atmosphere will be better at an on-campus stadium. And honestly, I think the ceiling is going to be lower as long as they're playing off-campus. And there's a reason only a handful of schools in the country really do what USF is doing by playing off-campus. You, you need community engagement. And by community, I mean campus engagement. That's, that's something that you need. That's something that the recruits want. And that's something that I think a lot of students want to, to make it a real part of the campus experience. So, um, but, but then again, the whole point, and I didn't get into this in the, the piece on TampaBay.com yet, but what's it going to cost, right? Like, yeah. If there's some donor who's going to pay $200 million to build a stadium, then it's a, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, of course you do it. But on the other side, if you, there, you don't have a donor like that, and you're going to have to have uh, you know either raise student fees or – borrow $200 million or something like that, then it becomes a lot harder to stomach. So the devil's going to be in the details there. And I think a lot of USF fans are trying to figure out, okay, this, this all sounds great, but where's the money coming from? And until that happens, and, and that'll probably be in, be in June at a board of trustees meeting, they're supposed to really start talking about the financials and how much that sort of thing. So until that happens, I think a lot of people are kind of like, let's wait and see. Matt, uh, there's, there's no question that there are some colleges, campuses, that are located in major markets, but that major market does not support them. Does Tampa support USF? That's a really good question. Um, it doesn't lend itself to a clean yes or no. I, I think when USF was good in 07 and, things, and they were relevant, I think that you sh there was a spark that showed that the, the city of Tampa and this, the Tampa Bay area can support a high-level college football team. The problem is that that's not where USF, USF is right now. Right now, they're in a middle-of-the-road league in, in the American Athletic Conference. There's hope, of course, that they would join the Big 12 or maybe the ACC, depending on what all happens in the coming years. But right now, they're in the middle-of-the-road league, and they're not very good, and attendance reflects that. I think if USF becomes very good, which is possible, and especially if they get an on-campus stadium and things turn around, I think the city could absolutely support a team like that. But right now, uh, you know, they are arguably fifth or sixth in the sports scene here in the Tampa Bay area behind, obviously, the three pro teams, the Bucks, Rays, and Lightning, uh, behind the Gators, and I would argue behind Florida State as well. So r right now it's a crowded market, and they haven't done enough uh, on the field to deserve being higher than that in a stadium – you know, you can put lipstick on a pig with a new stadium, uh, but if they, they don't play a better brand of football, recruiting better players, coaching them better, developing them better, it's not going to matter. Uh, Matt, I definitely want to get into the, the coaching and, and just the record over the last couple of years. But uh, first, kind of staying on the same topic, what was the reaction or what has been the continued reaction, if any, uh, of just that 
massive shift uh, once the Oklahoma and Texas news dropped. And then obviously the Big 12 went out and did what they did rather quickly. USF was not a part of this group, but but could be. And it all, like you said, just depends uh, on the the changing landscape. But what was kind of the reaction that you gathered from USF folks when they saw UCF making that leap, Cincinnati, et cetera? There was a whole lot of, you know, there was definitely a level of disappointment among the administration and among the fans, there was a, it was a major blow. I mean, let's be honest, UCF, uh, it, sorry, USF had you know, more or less blocked the, the, the Knights from joining, I think it was the big East uh, several years back. And that's a, that's a rivalry. And for UCF to go from the little brother to the point where USF can't even ride UCF's coattails to get into the big 12, that was a major blow. And then when you look at what's happened to the American, I mean, they lose their, their, you know, their best three programs in, in Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF. And then they're adding, and I think the best programs that they could realistically in Charlotte and, and FAU and, and UNT and those guys, uh, UTSA. But it's not the same. You know, I think there's a level of uh, concern in the fan base that the Bulls weren't drawing a ton of fans to begin with. And then you put them in, a, I guess, a better version of Conference USA that's not a good thing long term for them. So I think this is a critical, critical junction over these next five to 10 years with USF. Um, I have no idea what the landscape around the sport as a whole is going to look like in 2027, let alone 2032. But USF has to put themselves in a position to where if the conference realignment dominoes fall again, and if there's a super league or what have you, that they can rise rather than fall because I think the haves are going to get greater and the have nots are going to get worse. So they need to do them, put themselves in a position to try to get in the haves or at least be in the upper middle class, uh, you know, and, and improve their stock from where they are now. So USF had their spring game over the weekend. Obviously they're trying to, to put themselves in a position to also be relevant on the football field. Where are they in your opinion after spring ended? I think they've got a ways to go. I really do. Um, They've got a promising quarterback in Timmy McLean, who showed, he was a, as a freshman last year, he showed flashes of being, you know, a, a high end quarterback, certainly at that level. Um, but he also was a typical freshman and made freshman mistakes. If he can keep developing, they've got a quarterback. And, and he, as you guys know, if you've got a quarterback in the sport, that's half the battle. But I don't think the depth is there across the board. I think they need more playmakers. I'm still kind of concerned about where they are on the line. And, you know, the last couple of years, they have struggled. You know, they have not done a good enough job, job under uh, Coach Jeff Scott. And this is a pivotal, pivotal third year for him to, to get, make things better, to show major steps. So they got better in year two compared to year one, but it's not good enough yet. You know, the two wins is not good enough. So we're going to see whether they are able to take that step forward this fall. Because as we sit here today, I have major concerns about them long term. Yeah, though three and eighteen through his his first two years. Yeah. I mean, that's that's not going to cut it. And and even then, uh, you know, Matt towards the end, Charlie Strong, you know, had a couple of ten plus win seasons. But even his last couple of years, you started to see that kind of trickle down. Has this just been kind of a long extended process in some ways? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I don't think Charlie recruited at a high enough level to where USF needed to in order to, and that's part of the reason why Jeff Scott struggled in terms of what he inherited. He's had a couple years now to fix that, and he's recruited that, I think, at a, at a decent level. There's, there's been some definite hits in recruiting, and he's, he's done with the portal what I think he needs to do. By that, I mean he's gotten a lot of guys who are Florida natives, particularly from the, the Tampa Bay area, who went to other schools. You know, uh, Gore, uh, Gordon, a linebacker uh, from, from here in Plant City, went to Minnesota, didn't work out, comes back to Tampa to play at USF. A Joe a Joe, a receiver played at high school ball in Clearwater, went to Clemson, didn't work out, comes to USF. So if he's able to hit on some of those guys who had a high, you know, had a high ceiling, which is why they were wanted by power five schools, didn't work out there. If he can make those guys into playmakers, uh, kind of like what the, the model SMU I think has done to some degree, then there's hope for the future, but you're still counting on a lot of transfers and they're a 50, 50 proposition. Hey, uh, Matt, we're going to hopefully be in touch again soon when we have more time as well and, and touch in on Florida State, UF, uh, Florida, the Gators, and much more. Appreciate your time, and uh, I, I can't wait to, to look at the rest of the project you have on campuses, on uh, football stadiums on campus, because there's no question it has given Baylor and Waco a boom 
with what they've done with McLean Stadium about to build that new basketball pavilion as well. Yeah, uh, Baylor definitely benefited, and a lot of the other schools did too. It just is it worth the cost? And yep. that's something USF is going to have to figure out. Thank Thanks you. for the time, guys. Appreciate you it. Thank Matt you, Matt Baker, Tampa Bay Times covers uh, USF, also covers professional sports in Tampa, but the college teams as well around the area. Yeah, they're kind of state. they're kind of at a weird crossroads there, at USF right now. You know, between the the stadium questions, which you know, I mean, he he. He put out some good reasons, you know, why it makes sense, but there's that money tag. You know, I'd love to drive a, you know, a sports car, yep. but can I make that money worth it? I uh, know, not right now. I can't do that, you know. So uh, you'd love to have the stadium, but is the money, you know, can you make it work? Well, it doesn't sound like right now they can, but obviously they're trying to find ways. I know they got like a $5 million donation the other day, but, but clearly that's going to, you know, be a, a drop in the bucket, but it's better than, than nothing. Uh, but they'll need a few more of those. But, yeah, just in terms of, uh, that's one thing, and that's not made it make or break, but they're just the results. I mean, it's it's been going down now for like four years from when they were winning back-to-back 10-plus win seasons, and then, you know, Charlie's last couple years started to drop, and then these last two in particular, Jeff Scott, I mean, 3-18. and 18. Uh, Even if you want to eliminate the COVID year, that's still 2-10 and 10 last year, so they got a lot of work to do, no doubt about it. Well, and they're also watching, as he even admitted, and they don't like to mention UCF when you're a USF uh, fan or, or around the area. They're watching what they're a part of. Sure. They're watching what Miami and Florida and Florida State are doing as they try to have a resurgence as well. When we come back, Ross 